Hello everyone and welcome to today's After Effects scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating a script that will center all of the anchor points of your masked out objects. Now what this will basically do is anytime we select an object or multiple objects, you can see in this case that our center point is way off here. And instead of going to each layer and changing the anchor point ourselves, let's say we had tons of these layers and we don't want to have to do it ourselves. Well now we can just run this script and now all of the anchor points are going to be centered for us. Now to do this we're going to be using a relatively simple formula to get the centroid or the center point of a polygon. This will basically give us the anchor point and position we need. Now if you're not familiar with these type of maths, it's basically a sigma summation function which we can translate in programming as a for loop. So all this might be confusing now, but we're basically going to be calculating the x, the y, and the area of our mask using the same for loop, also known as a summation function. So let's go ahead and get started on this quick tutorial. It's about 70 lines of code. So we'll start off by creating a new JavaScript file. All right, so to get started on this script, let's go ahead and just outline some of the things we're going to be doing. What we want this script to do is center the anchor point and position to the same value. So we're going to use some calculations that will work for any size polygon. So let's say we actually had five or more. If we ran this, it would still calculate the center. So if I click on run, it's still going to get the center and it's not based on the bounds of the footage, it's based on the position of the vertices. So to get started, let's make a function called main where we can start to run everything through. Inside of here, there's two things we need to check first. First, has the user selected a composition? Because we need them to select a composition with layers in it in order to find the mask vertices, etc. So first, I'm going to say if app.project.activeItem is equal to null, or if app.project.activeItem, or there's no active composition open, instance of comp item. So this is saying, if the current active item is null, there's nothing selected, or if it's a composition item, well, we want to make sure we check if it's not a composition item. So we'll enclose this in parentheses, this uh, instance of statement, and we'll add an exclamation mark to say, if this is not a comp item, then we want to tell the user to please select a composition. And then we'll return false to exit out of this function and not go any further. Then we're assuming if they already have a comp selected, we also need to make sure they have at least one layer selected. So we're also going to say if app.project.activeItem, which at this point we know is a composition and is not null if they've made it this far. And we want to check if the selected layers.length, so the number of selected layers, needs to be greater than one. So we're going to say if it's less than one, we want to tell the user please select at least one layer. And then same thing, return false to sort of break out of this code. All right, so now that we've done a few checks, we can now begin the main code part. To begin, I'm going to add an app.begin undo group and an app.end undo group. And what this means is once we've made it past these checks to see if there's a comp and layers selected, we're going to start a section of code that we can easily just press undo and all the things will be undone. So in our case, when we undo it, it's going to undo all of our anchor points. So I'm just going to call this uh, anchor point application. And to begin, we want to go ahead and define a couple of variables. The first thing, just to make things easy, we'll have a variable for our active composition. So we'll just call it comp and we'll set it equal to app.project and our active item. Then we'll set up a few, since we're going to be iterating through each of the selected layers, the user can have as many selected as they want. We're going to have a variable called this layer, which each iteration we go through will set equal to the current selected layer. I will also have one called my path, mask property, and this mask. And then finally, we'll create an empty array called my vertices. And we're going to be storing some data inside of there that's important later. All right, after we've defined these variables, let's go ahead and start up a for loop here. And in this for loop, we're gonna wanna go through all of our selected layers. So I'm gonna grab our layers, and actually I'll grab the length too. Copy it, and inside of our for loop, I'll just say var i is equal to zero. We're gonna start at zero because 
uh, the selected layers are an array, which always start at index zero. And we're gonna say for i is less than our selected layers, which in this case we can actually replace with comp dot selected layers dot length. And then we'll increment by one. Now inside of here, we're going to use these variables we just defined, and you'll see how this works here. So first we'll say this layer, and we wanna say this current layer is gonna be equal to our comp and our selected layers and the ith selected layer, so to speak. So each time it goes through, say we had two selected, the first time it's gonna go through this first red layer and then the green one. Then we'll set our this mask variable equal to this layer and the property called mask. And we also wanna grab uh, the first property, so property one. The reason we do this is when we say property.mask, it's actually just referencing this masks drop down right here and then we need to grab the first property, which is the first mask. So realize that this is not taken into account if the user doesn't have a mask on the layer. If it, they don't have a mask, it will mess this up. So just make sure they have a mask and just one of them and everything will be okay. So then below this mask, we're going to grab my path and set that equal to this mask and the property called mask path and its value. What this is referencing is our mask path right here, which is all of our vertices, the information stored inside of there. So now that we have my path, which contains vertices and the tangent lines, we wanna grab specifically the vertices. So I'm gonna say my vertices is equal to my path dot vertices. You could also say my path dot intangents and my path dot out tangents. And this would give you different values if you had say Bezier curves. So if you didn't have just regular and you had these, you could also get the values that tell you how these handles are orientated. But in our case, we just want the vertices because we're just calculating the center points. So now that we've got all of the information we need, we just need to set up the functions that are going to process, spit out the data and give us what we need. So there's just a couple more things we need to write here. What I'm gonna do is create a variable called center and this is just gonna be the center point in which we're going to be putting the anchor point to. We're gonna set this equal to a function we're about to create called centroid sigma function. Now this sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie or something, that's all right. Uh, this is just how I'm naming it in this case. What this basically means is we're calculating the center point using a sigma or for loop function and inside of it, we're going to pass through my vertices. Again, we're going to define this function in a sec, which will take in all of the vertices from our mask and spit out the center point calculated. But after we do this, what we need to do is, assuming we got the center correctly, we need to set the center to our anchor point. Now, if I say pick this green layer here and I bring up the position and the anchor point, if I move the anchor point around, you can see the anchor point and position properties remain the same. So we need to replicate this to place this in the center. We know what the center point is, but now the action to bring it to the center is to change both the anchor point and the position. So I'm gonna grab this layer and grab the property called position and set the value. And then the same thing below it, I'll grab the property called anchor point and set the value. And I'm actually going to set the position afterward just to make sure we don't come across any issues. And then I'm going to set these properties to the center. All right, so now's the step in the programming where we're gonna be doing some math and learning how we can translate this pretty easily into code. So first, I'm gonna quickly define our function that we just made called centroid sigma function. And again, as the argument we pass in is just gonna be our vertices. Now, let's take a look at how this is exactly gonna work. What we're going to do is create a for loop using these summations. As you can see, this says i equals zero. That's actually where our for loop is going to begin. So we can literally just start translating this. I'll write a for loop just to get started here. And I'll say var i is equal to zero, which in this case it is. Now the top of the sigma function is the bounds that we're going to reach and then stop the for loop. So basically, uh, previously we said i equals zero and for i is less than our selected layer length. Well, the selected layer length would sort of be like the n minus one. 
In this case, n is representative of the number of vertices of our polygon. So inside of our for loop, we'll say i is less than our vertices dot length. Because when we get the vertices property inside of a mask path, it's going to bring back an nth dimensional array with all of our vertexes or vertices. So in this case, with this solid here, that's green, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I actually just alert our vertices dot length and select my green layer here, we should get six. And as per usual in JavaScript, I found the dumbest error. Instead of saying this layer dot property dot mask, it needs to be masks. As I actually explained, this says masks and I put mask as I explained it. So now if I go ahead and run this, it should tell me uh, the length of how many vertices I have. So one more thing that we had to do is actually call this function. So we need to just say main. Now if we run it, we're finally going to get the number of vertices. As you can see, we have six. If I select, say, this red square, I'm going to get four. So now we know that we're correctly getting the number of vertices we need. Now we can go back into our for loop here. And now that we know our vertices.length is correct, we can just say increment i by one. Now for each time through this loop, we're going to be basically calculating what this math here says. Before that though, we need to define a couple of variables that we can change over time. We'll create one called x, y, x1, and y1. And these are going to be representative of xi, xi plus one, y, i, and yi plus one. Basically just referencing the current x and y and the next one down the line. Then I'll create two variables called calculated x, set it equal to zero, and calculated y and set that equal to zero. This is going to be equal to our cx and cy. That is going to basically be storing the final value as it gets incremented each time through. And then finally, we just need a variable for the area, which will set to zero, which we're also going to be needing for our scalar here. So after we are done performing our for loop operations, we need to apply these scalar fractions in front of here. So once we calculate our area, we need to divide it by two, that way we can have it. And then for our x and y, our scalar is one divided by six times the area. So we're gonna be calculating the area as well. All right, so each time through one of these vertices points, we need to grab the x1, y1, x, and y points. So I'm gonna say x equals y equals, x1 equals, and y1 equals. Each time through, these are gonna be pretty simple values to get. For x, it's just going to be our vertices, our current index point, and the next index is zero, because zero is the x and one is the y. So vertices, uh, for the y, we have i and one. And then similarly for x1, we're going to grab our vertices index i plus one, and then zero for x. And then for y1, our vertices i plus one again, and index one. The reason we're putting these into our little variables here is just so that we don't have to write out vertices i plus one, zero every time we reference x or x plus one. So one important point that this formula uses is that once you reach the last point, you're gonna run into some issues. So if we're going from i equals zero, and it's less than our vertices dot length minus one. Basically what that means is when we get to the last one here and we say i plus one, that's gonna be referencing a value that doesn't exist because it's one more than the length that we have in our array. So to get around this, we're gonna create an if statement and that's going to go into an else statement. Inside of our if statement, we're going to check a simple thing. We're gonna say if i does not equal our vertices dot length minus one. We're basically saying, look at where we're at in the for loop. If we're not at the very, very last time through, we're just gonna behave normally. If we are on the last time through, we need to behave a little bit differently. So what I'm gonna do is cut out my x1 and y1 here and paste it in both of these if and else statements. Now the one we're going to leave is the one for the normal case here. This one right here, if our vertices are not the last point, 
uh, this is what x1 and y1 should be. But if it is the last point, i plus 1 is out of bounds. So we need to actually reference back to the very first index. Simple as that. Now below this if and else statement, we're going to do our iteration here where we calculate our x and y for the current time through. So I'll say calculated x and calculated y plus equals for each of these because we're adding them to themselves. And we're literally just going to copy what this formula tries to say here. So we're going to start off with xi, which is just x. I'm going to match up these parentheses as well. So x plus x1, because we have xi and xi plus 1. And then this is all multiplied by x1 times y1 minus x1 times y. And we're also going to want to add a multiplication symbol in here uh, because it's not implied that that's multiplication in JavaScript. So I'm just going to copy and paste this down below here. And the only difference between these two formulas here is that the second one for the y coordinate uses y instead of x. Very easy to understand. So let's go ahead and put it in here. All right, so now that we've done that, this is going to accurately calculate the summation loop through. But the last thing we need to do is calculate our scalar as well as our area. So below here, we're going to grab our area variable and increment that as well, plus equals. And we're going to use the same formula. So because these for loops use the same bounds, uh, 0 to n minus 1, we can simply include this in here. So for the area, we have x times y1 minus x1 times y. Alrighty, and now to finish it off, we're going to break out of our for loop here. Once we've done all of these incremental calculations, we can now do our scalars. So first we need to calculate the area, and our scalar for that is half. So we're going to grab area and set it equal to itself times 0.5, which is just half. Super easy. And then for calculated x and calculated y, we're going to set these equal to also themselves times in parentheses 1 divided by 6 times the area. And for the 6a, I'm going to put it in its own parentheses just to make sure that we multiply it before the division of the 1. And then I'm going to paste this in the calculated y. And now we just need to bring this back. Because remember, when we called upon the centroid sigma function, we're expecting to push it into a variable called center. So at the bottom of our function here, I'm going to return an array of two values, which is simply going to be our calculated x and our calculated y. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out here. I'm gonna load up my fresh project where my anchor points are not proper. Select everything, press play, and it looks like we already have an issue. And I think it's just a misspelling of vertices here. Let me fix that. And again, the easiest thing is to misspell things. Can't tell you how many times I've misspelled things and spent hours trying to look for it. Let's try again. And it appears that we've failed today at spelling vertices correctly. That's all right, it should be working now. All right, so now if we go ahead and run our script here, press the play button, you can see now everything's going to be nice and centered for us. And it doesn't matter what shape it is, it could be a star with 100 points, it's going to calculate the center point. If you guys have any questions, if I glossed over anything, went over too fast, just ask any questions you have in the comments down below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for more tutorials coming out every week. And we will see you guys next time.